Hello makers, and welcome to Share Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris, and today we're going to be talking about working with chiffon fabrics. Those slinky, beautiful fabrics that are also a bit of a pain to sew with. So, let's get to it. First off, you're going to want to cut the fabric and you're not going to want to do it the way that you traditionally do it. Um, typically, you will sandwich your fabric together and you'll cut two pieces. That way, you cut once and you get two mirror images. Now, with slinky fabrics like a silk chiffon, you don't want to do that. The fabric is very slippery. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is lay out your fabric in a single layer on the cutting surface. Now, you can do something to stabilize the fabric, like using a spray starch. You can make it homemade or you can purchase some. That being said, that will only work with a synthetic or polyester chiffon. If you're using a 100% silk chiffon, silk and water don't do well together. Uh, sometimes water can stain silks, so you're going to want to avoid that method. The method that I traditionally go to, regardless of what type of chiffon it is, is the tissue paper method. So after you have your single layer of chiffon fabric laid out on your cutting surface, you're going to want to put a layer of tissue paper, yes, the same kind you can buy at the dollar store, underneath your chiffon, and then you can cut that. Now, some people like to put a second layer of tissue paper right on top, so you're sandwiching the two together, and once you have either your one or two layers of tissue paper on, you can either pin them together. If you're going to use that method, be very careful not to pin in the middle of the garment because you can cause snags and to use fine silk pins, not those nice big pins that you'd use with cottons or when you're doing your quilting. The other method is you can use pattern weights. So I prefer to use pattern weights when working with chiffon. Number one, it helps to hold things in place a little bit better and you're not going to worry about some of the snags the pins will get. Now you can cut it out with this method using traditional scissors, but if you want to be even more precise, I would recommend using a rotary cutter. Now, if you've got a lot of really tight curves and turns, you're going to want to get a rotary cutter and that has a little bit of a smaller blade than the one you traditionally use during quilting. Now, I often have a separate rotary cutter that I use for this because cutting through the tissue paper will dull your blade. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. You're gonna go through a bit more blades if you're going to be doing a lot of cutting of silks and chiffons, but this method will help to make sure your pattern pieces are the correct size. Because many of you have been out there and have been like me and before I knew this trick, I would just cut them out with scissors, I'd pin my pattern pieces on, and they'd be all wonky and wobbly, and they wouldn't be the way that they needed to be. So, make sure you use some sort of stabilizer, whether that is tissue paper or your starch. Next tip I have is how to cut those notches and marking some of those pattern elements that you need to transfer on to that chiffon. So, I do not recommend cutting notches into your fabric. Chiffon frays like there is no tomorrow. So if you are going to cut notches, I would suggest cutting them out as opposed to in. And then on the edges, putting a little bit of fray check on there to prevent some of that fraying. Now, that, that's a lot of steps right there. Personally, what I like to use, if I have a solid chiffon, I'll use my water soluble blue marker and that shows up absolutely wonderfully. If you have a chiffon that has a bit of a pattern to it or it is darker, I would suggest using tailor tacks. So if you don't know what those are, it is when you take a longer thread with your hand needle and you're basically creating a little X in your fabric and you can pull those tailor tacks out very easily later on. So that is a couture method that I use when I'm doing any of my fancier dresses, but if you're just putting something together quickly and it's a bit more casual, by all means use the water soluble marker. It will save you a ton of time. Okay, so now we're on to sewing with chiffon. Now, before you even start taking a stitch, there's a couple of things you wanna do. 
You want to adjust your stitch length so it's a little bit shorter and make sure you check your tension because sometimes certain machines and just depending on how you have your settings, you might get a bit of roaching or puckering and gathering in those stitches, which does completely fine on something like a cotton lawn or a twill. But when you've got a thinner, slinkier fabric, what it's doing is the tension's a little bit too high, so it's pulling those stitches together, creating those roaching. So what you want to do is lower that tension a bit. So before you take your fashion fabric, you know, silk chiffon is rather expensive. You don't want to go and ruin that after you've cut out those pieces painstakingly. You're going to want to do a couple of test rows with some scrap fabric from some of the cutouts that you have laying around before you start working on the actual garment. And just make sure that you get the tension and the stitch length correct. Now, because it is such a slippery fabric, a problem that often happens is people get to the machine, they start sewing, and then that fabric gets sucked into the throat plate on your sewing machine. And you've got this big ball of thread and your fabric's stuck in the throat plate. You gotta get out your screwdriver, take it apart, and you're just ripping your hair out. Well, there's a couple of ways you can prevent this. So, Number one is if your machine has a throat plate that is adjustable. So the reason why it gets sucked in is because the little circle there is actually wider to accommodate a zigzag stitch. Certain machines, you're actually able to flip around that throat plate and they'll just be a single small circle, which is large enough just for the needle to go through on a straight stitch. You're gonna wanna do that. Now, if you don't have that kind of machine, what you can do is you can get out a piece of tape, cover the throat plate just over the hole so you don't wanna to touch any of the feed dogs because you need to be able to move the fabric through. And then when your needle goes through, it's only going through in that one little hole through the tape. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to change your needle. I like to use a 70-10 needle, so a nice fine tip needle. You don't want to use anything thick when you've got such a fine, delicate fabric with delicate fibers. Also, I would suggest matching that with a more delicate thread as well. You don't want to be using anything too thick, and cotton tends to break fairly easily, so a thinner polyester, or even they have threads that are made specifically for silk. So you can try that out. So, Remember that tissue paper that we had cut out when we cut out our pattern pieces? Don't throw that away. We're actually going to use it when we stitch. So if you keep that tissue paper together when you're stitching your garment, it acts as a stabilizer. Now you can also use the tearaway stabilizer that you have little scraps left over from when you do your embroidery. And you can place that just at the beginning and just at the end of the seams just to get you started because it gives the feed dogs a little something to grab as you go in. Another tip that you can use if you have a walking foot, so that's what you traditionally use when you're doing some quilting, you can attach that walking foot on because what it will do is it will grab the fabric both from the bottom as well as the top and feed the fabric through evenly, giving you a little evener stitch. Now, you're all ready and set to start stitching. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is forget all of your knowledge of remembering to backstitch at the front and back of every seam. Because on delicate fabrics like this, number one, it creates some bulk, which you don't really want. And number two, that's where some of the problems can lie when that fabric gets sucked down into the feed dog, into the throat plate. So, what you're going to do in order to secure the ends is you're going to leave a long tail, several inches or so, about yay big, and you're going to leave that on the end, don't backstitch, go all the way to the end of your seam, and then don't cut the threads off or use your automatic cutter. Leave another longer thread tail, draw those thread tails over to the wrong side, and then do a couple of knots by hand. So similar to when you're doing a bodice or a dart that's in say a bodice like this, where you tie off the end so you don't have that big bulky seam with all those back stitching. So now that we are able to stitch some of those seams, how do we go about finishing those seams with a sheer fabric like chiffon? So you can't go and do Hong Kong seams. You're going to see those through on the right side of the garment. 
You could zigzag or overlock because it frays a lot. That's a decent method. But again, you're going to see those stitches through on the right side. So my personal favorite is to go in and do a French seam. So a quick recap on how you do a French seam. Instead of going right side to right side when you're stitching your fabric, you're going to want to put your fabric wrong side to wrong side, and then you're going to stitch your seam narrower than your seam allowance. Now that's key, otherwise it's going to be too small. And then you're going to trim that seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch, so nice and close to the edge of the fabric there. Then you're going to want to take it over to the iron and you're going to want to press it on the fold all to one side and you're going to press it right side to right side. That's how we traditionally make our seam. And then you're going to head back over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch that seam. So what ends up happening is you're actually encasing all of the ends into that French seam. You've got a nice finished edge on the inside and it looks beautiful both on the inside of the garment as well as on the outside of the garment. So the next time that you're doing some seams with some sheer fabric, I'd really consider you taking a challenge at doing some French seams. And lastly, how do we finish those pesky hems? So we're not gonna wanna do the traditional, you know, roll up an inch or an inch and a half, two inches. It just doesn't work on the sheer fabric. What we are going to want to do is a rolled hem. And so how you go about doing that is you're going to take your sewing machine and you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. And this is going to be relatively around where you want your hemline to be because it is a very narrow hem so it's not going to go up much. So make sure you know where that hem is going to be first. So after you've done that line of stitching, you're going to take it over to your iron and you're going to press that stitching towards the wrong side. And so the stitching will be right on the fold as you're pressing. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take duck build scissors or very carefully with your regular scissors, clip closely to the edge of that seam about an eighth of an inch away. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the iron and you're going to press it up that eighth of an inch up. So nice and tiny. You're gonna to wanna to press it. Now you can put in pins if you like. I find that the pins don't really stay in very well and it's just bothersome and sometimes they can even snag your fabric. So personally what I like to do is use that heat and steam that your iron has. If it is silk, do not use steam, just heat. Silk can take a ton of heat, but it doesn't like water. And it'll have that memory, so a bit of a memory with it. It doesn't actually press. You don't get a crisp press with chiffon. And take it back to the sewing machine, and then you're just going to want to fold it over by hand, that scant eighth of an inch, and stitch all the way down in that narrow hem. And it looks beautiful. If you're going to be doing this on a bridal gown, a prom dress, something that is a bit more fancy and it's a special occasion and you really want to make it meaningful for that individual that's going to be wearing the garment, I would highly suggest rolling the hem by hand. It is a beautiful technique and it is something that I do in all of my couture dresses. It takes a lot more time, but it's well worth the effort to put into that. So I hope these tips and tricks really help you the next time that you're sewing some slinky fabric and chiffon. If you have any questions or some wonky problems that you're not sure about, send them in the comments down below, or you can send me a direct message on Instagram at Sheer Stitchery. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing that. And I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time, guys. Let's get your so spiration on. Bum bum bum